Hey guys, today we've got another exciting game of Revised 40. This time we've got myself on the left side of the screen, playing my black-green rock deck, against my opponent Dan playing his red-white control deck. Both of us are on the mulligan, so we're both going to have two bottom cards. Dan puts a card on the bottom, and then so do I. And Dan's on the play this game, so he leads with a mountain into a mana vault. Mana Vault's going to give him some really fast early mana. We'll see what he can do with it. And I have some early mana of my own with a Birds of Paradise. And I pass the turn back to Dan. My opponent goes with a Plains and passes back. I get to tap for three and play a Hypnotic Spectre. My opponent doesn't seem like they have a Swords to Plowshares or a Lightning Bolt, otherwise he certainly would have used it on either one of my two creatures, but could potentially have a fireball. And it looks like that's exactly what happens. Dan has a fireball and taps six mana to split two damage and two damage between my Birds of Paradise and Hypnotic Spectre. Remember with fireball you do have to split the damage evenly. So Dan passes the turn back to me. I tap two mana and decide to regrowth my Hypnotic Spectre and pass the turn back to my opponent. Dan takes a point of damage because his mana vault has stayed tapped and falls down to 19. On my turn, I cast that Hypnotic Spectre that I had previously regrowthed. But my opponent has the Swords to Plowshares, so I go up to 22. My opponent untaps their mana vault On my turn, I go for a Sengir Vampire and pass the turn back. Hopefully my opponent doesn't have another Swords to Plowshares because a Lightning Bolt cannot kill a Sengir Vampire by itself. Dan could easily have a Fireball or a Disintegrate to handle it, but it would make him tap his Mana Vault. My opponent does have the Fireball, so taps 5 and kills my Sengir Vampire. Passing the turn back, I go for a second copy of Sangir Vampire. Back on Dan's turn, he taps four for a Wrath of God, which kills my Sangir Vampire. Casting Wrath of God just as a one-for-one -one removal spell, not really where you want to be, but taking out a Sangir Vampire is a pretty reasonable thing to do with it. But unfortunately for my opponent, I have the third and final copy of Sangir Vampire. So hopefully he'll have a Swords to Plowshares or something like a Fireball to kill it. Looks like no Swords and my opponent falls down to 14. And I pass the turn back to my opponent, who untaps their Mana Vault. On Dan's turn, he has a Fireball, which he taps and pays extra mana for, just in case I have a Giant Growth. But it looks like I have two giant growths, so able to keep my Sengir Vampire alive. Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. I'd rather be using those giant growths to deal damage to my opponent, but saving it from a fireball is just as good. I play a Cockatrice and pass the turn back to Dan. Cockatrice also cannot be killed by a lightning bolt, but it looks like Dan has a Disintegrate, taking a point of damage off that mana vault staying tapped and he uses it to kill my Sengir and passes the turn back. I go to combat and swing for two. Dan goes down to seven. I play a Bird of Paradise. Doesn't look like I have any follow-up, so I pass the turn back to my opponent, who takes the damage off of his Mana Vault. Dan goes for a Fireball for four to kill my Cockatrice. So I no longer have any creatures with any power left to attack. And passes the turn back to me. I don't have any plays, so I pass the turn back to my opponent, who untaps his Mana Vault. After he untaps it, I go for a Crumble, which is going to destroy the Mana Vault so that he can't use the mana for big fireballs or anything like that. Crumble does let him gain a life, putting him back up to 7. And Dan passes the turn, not having much mana to work with. And I go for a Mind Twist for Dan's entire hand. 
so he decides to use a Swords to Plowshares on the bird since it would get discarded if he didn't. And I discard some pretty good cards there. It looked like two Fireballs and an Earthquake. And pass the turn back to my opponent, who is now looking for top decks. I go for a Hypnotic Spectre, which is not a big attacker, but my opponent Dan is only at 7 life. But it looks like he found a Wrath of God, which is going to be able to kill my Hypnotic Spectre. Punch it! Mm. Now both of us are just looking for top decks, and it looks like I hit a pretty good one, another copy of Hypnotic Spectre. And I pass the turn back. Dan taps out for a fireball just in case I have a giant growth, and is able to kill my Hypnotic Spectre. After a couple passes back and forth, I play a Soul Ring, and pass the turn back to my opponent. Soul Ring doesn't really do much at this stage in the game, but still a card that I can cast. Dan passes the turn back, and I go for a Demonic Tutor. There are no Sengir Vampires even left in my deck, so interesting what I might try and get here. The only other creatures that can do very much attacking would be something like a War Mammoth, or possibly my last copy of Hypnotic Spectre. After the Demonic Tutor, I go for a War Mammoth, which is almost certainly what I Demonic Tutored for, as the last attacker in my deck. I go to combat and swing for three, putting my opponent down to four. Not quite in giant growth range, which is unfortunate. Back on my turn, I swing for four again, putting my opponent down to one. He does have one more turn to draw an answer, but doesn't look like he's able to find one. So Black Green Rock takes down game number one against Red White Control. Moving into game number two, my opponent Dan on the right side is going to be on the play this time. And my opponent goes with a mountain and passes the turn back. I go with a swamp and pass. After a couple turns just passing back and forth playing lands, I go for a Hypnotic Spectre. Very possible that my opponent has a Lightning Bolt or a Sword to kill it. And looks like he does have a Lightning Bolt, so Hypnotic Spectre is killed. And I pass the turn back to Dan. Back on my turn, I cast a Dark Ritual, adding triple black to my mana pool and use a single green to return my Hypnotic Spectre to my hand, so now with two black floating. And then I tap another Swamp to recast my Hypnotic Spectre and pass the turn back to my opponent. Unfortunately for me, Dan does have a Disintegrate, which he can use to exile my Hypnotic Spectre, and he passes the turn back. Red-white control is really good at keeping creatures under control. It has a bunch of disintegrates and fireballs to deal with little threats too. I go for a Sengir Vampire and pass the turn back. My opponent does have 5 mana, which is going to allow him to cast something like a fireball, which it looks like he does. So fireball for 4 takes out the Sengir Vampire. On my turn, I play a Bird of Paradise and pass the turn back to Dan. After a couple passes back and forth, I finally draw a Sengir Vampire, which I can cast. Unfortunately for me, Dan does have access to a lot of mana, and goes for a Wrath of God, which is going to take out my Sengir. Dan now tapping out for a Fireball for 7, taking me down to 13. I'm in top deck mode on the left side, so Dan doesn't have anything to fear if he is going to start using his fireballs to just try and kill me. So back on his turn, looks like he does the same thing again, does another fireball for 8, taking me down to 5, and passes the turn back. I still am not able to find a threat, so one more fireball is going to be lethal, and looks like my opponent has an earthquake which is going to deal damage to both of us, but obviously my opponent being at 20 is going to allow them to stay alive. Moving into game number 3, I'm going to be on the play this time on the left side, so I go with a Forest and a Bird of Paradise and pass the turn back to Dan. We'll see if Dan can kill this with a Swords to Plowshares or a Lightning Bolt. It's almost always correct to do this against a deck that cares a lot about having fast mana. Doesn't look like my opponent has either one of those, 
so I'm able to cast a turn two Hypnotic Spectre off of my Bird of Paradise. And wow, looks like my opponent does have a Lightning Bolt. Decides to use it on the Hypnotic Spectre instead of the Bird of Paradise. Oh, God! God, I did not see that coming! After a few passes back and forth just playing lands, I go for a Jam Day Tome. The Tome is going to be really powerful at this late stage of the game, allowing me to draw more cards than my opponent. And the only thing that Dan might have to destroy it would be something like a Shatter. So it's going to be difficult for Dan to handle this Tome, and hopefully I'll get to start drawing some extra cards off of it. On my end step, it looks like Dan does have a Disenchant, so I draw off the Jam Day Tome and pass the turn back. After a couple more passes back and forth, Dan taps out for a Disintegrate targeting my face. This is going to take me down to 15. Since I am in top deck mode and don't have a Jam Day Tome to draw me into more threats, Dan feels comfortable using his removal spells to just deal direct damage instead of saving them to destroy my creatures. So there's a Fireball there, taking me down to 10, and Dan passes the turn back. I still am not able to draw a threat. So Dan is pretty free to just use all of his direct damage to go straight to my life total. Dan goes for a fireball for 6, taking me down to just 4 life, and passes the turn back. On my turn, I have a war mammoth, which is not going to be nearly enough if Dan has another fireball. My opponent goes for a soul ring and an earthquake. Earthquake's going to deal 4 damage and lock up game number 3. I hope you guys enjoyed watching that game. I know I enjoyed playing it. If you do want to check out the entire decklist, it's up on screen now, or you can check it out down in the description box. If you like this video and want to see more Revised 40 content, be sure to click the subscribe button and check out the Revised 40 playlist. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.